Here in the U.S., tofu often gets a bad rap. Commercial brands can have a chalky taste and in firmer styles a spongy texture. And tofu really should have a clean and delicate flavor that melts in your mouth. Happily, we discovered that making your own tofu at home is not only easy, but it is one of those DIY projects that, when compared to the price of pre-made tofu, is a huge bargain. Tofu at its simplest is curdled soy milk, but not any soy milk will do. We tested mainstream supermarket brands and found that because of the additives and heat treatment they go through to be more shelf stable, it renders them unable to curdle. So unless you can get freshly made soy milk from an Asian supermarket or health food store, you're better off making your own. Start by placing eight ounces of dried soybeans in a large bowl and add enough water to cover by a couple of inches. Soak them overnight and by the next day, the beans will have more than doubled in size and turned from beige to pale yellow. They should split apart when rubbed between your fingertips. Next, you'll need to drain and rinse the beans before running them through your blender. You should have about three cups of soaked beans at this point, so that's why I like to work in batches, adding three cups of water for every one cup of beans. Blend until the mixture is milky and mostly smooth and transfer each blended batch to a Dutch oven. Now the texture will be grainy, but we're going to sort that out later, so don't worry. Now bring the blended beans up to a boil and then simmer over medium low heat for about 10 minutes. This gives the soy milk a richer consistency and makes the raw beans more digestible. Heating the soy milk turns it foamy and prone to boiling over, so keep an eye on it and stir occasionally. To remove the fibrous bits of soybean that are still left in the milk, strain the soy milk through a colander lined with butter muslin or a triple layer of cheesecloth. Place the colander over a large bowl to catch the strained milk, then twist and squeeze the pulp to extract as much liquid as possible. Use tongs for this because the liquid will still be hot. After straining, you should have about eight cups of smooth, silky soy milk. Now return it to a clean Dutch oven. The pulp that remains is called okara and is actually rich in fiber, calcium, and protein. Many cooks like to save the okara and add it to quick bread, stir fries, or cold deli style salads. For a coagulant, I use nigari, a salt from seawater. I prefer liquid over flaked since it reliably delivers fluffy curds and tofu with a nice neutral flavor. For this recipe, we're going to dilute two tablespoons of nigari in a half cup of water. Next, I bring my strained soy milk to a boil and then stir it in a figure eight motion to get it churning to ensure even distribution. Off the heat, pour in half the nagari mixture and let the milk sit for two minutes. Doing this in stages ensures the whey isn't expressed too quickly so you'll get a better yield and fluffier curds. By now, the curd should be starting to form. Gently sprinkle the remaining nagari over the surface of the milk and stir gently, trying not to break up too many curds. Put the lid on the pot and let it sit undisturbed. After 20 minutes, there should be white, fluffy, well-defined curds surrounded by clear yellow whey. Line a tofu mold with butter muslin or a triple layer of cheesecloth and place it in the sink. I use a tofu mold that I ordered online, but I've also had success using a plastic quart-sized strawberry container, which I poke with three holes in the bottom for even drainage. Gently transfer the soy milk curds to a prepared mold using a skimmer or a large slotted spoon, trying not to break up too much of their natural structure. At this point, the tofu is a loose mass of curds, but with a little well-applied pressure, it will turn into a firm block. For weight, I found a box of chicken broth fits well into the constructs of the mold. Put the box lid on top of the tofu, and then top with your box of broth. Depending on how you like your tofu, soft, medium, or firm, you can press the curds anywhere from 20 to 50 minutes. I like medium tofu most often, so I press the curds for about 30 minutes. After my tofu has reached its perfect texture, I gently lift it out of its mold, place it in a shallow baking dish or pie plate, and fill the dish with cold water. The cold water will help firm up the block of tofu so it will be more sturdy and sliceable. It only needs 10 minutes before it's ready to be put to use. You can also store it, refrigerate it, and submerge it in water for up to one week. So just make sure to change the water daily to keep the tofu as fresh as possible. So there you go, homemade tofu that will beat any store-bought version. You can find this in over 100 other recipes for homemade favorites, ranging from vanilla extract to whole grain mustard to feta cheese in the America's Test Kitchen DIY cookbook.